Okay, so the recording has started. And I'm going to share my screen. First place we're going to go is into Silhouette Studio. So, uh, as in the handout that you got for this class, you see the first thing you need to do is open Silhouette Studio. Uh, I like to, when I'm doing sketching, I like to take the grid marks out, which is in this second tab of the page setup panel, which is up here, but it will open. That's the first panel that will be open when you open a new document. Is with the grid in place, it just, I find it distracting when I'm trying to draw stuff because I'm getting lines in there um, that aren't my drawing. So I usually turn that off on the drawing. Now, if you need to rearrange your design so that you put it, you know, where it needs to be on the mat, because say we're just going to do a six by six card, and I, so card front or something, and so I don't want to put the whole piece of cardstock down. I'll want to have my lines in there so I know that my design needs to be in the, where my cardstock is going to be and where my design is. The second thing is, is when you're going to be sketching or writing in a font or anything that you using a pen or of, of any kind, it's, this is all about pens essentially is sketch pens, which are silhouette brand that specifically fits into the pen holder. You and number one, also look at the silhouette pen holder that you can use for any other kind of pen that you might have as long as it fits into it. And then we're going to look at the foil quill pen. So I've got my Silhouette so Studio open, and I'm going to go to Send. What I'm going to do here is over here where it says Cut, I'm going to tell it to sketch. And it's going to do a couple of things. First of all, it's going to put this to pen. That's the only option. It doesn't matter what kind of pen you're using. It just knows that it's going to be drawing rather than cutting. It does not really matter what you do here because these are the, you know, if I picked a different, that's copy paper, which is really thin. If I picked something that was thicker, let's say hard stuff, it normally it would change some of these settings, but because it's drawing, it is not. This is the default setting for sketching which is a force of seven and a speed of five typically that works really well sometimes you have to play around with these things as with even with cutting but there you go so now we're ready to work on sketching the ne next thing i'm going to show you are sketch pens and there's something about the sketch pens that i want to tell you that is coming up more and more because when they put out the silhouette cameo four the tool holders are different than the three. And so there are products that specifically fit in the Cameo 3, and then there's products that fit in the Cameo 4. If you're local, it's a Cameo 3 that's at the makerspace. So they have, they have actually both sets of pens because somebody brought in the ones. You can see that they have the black on the outside, but those won't work. In the earlier editions of the machine, you can use the older ones in the new machine with a special adapter. Look, it's a handout. This is a package of pens that I've had forever. These are for the Silhouette Cameo 3, which is the one that's sitting on my desk. I don't actually have a regular size 4 machine. Yeah, good you have Zoom experience. Yeah, that's been the best part about lately is that. Folks know how to use Zoom. Um, I have a Silhouette Cameo 4 Pro, which is a cutting has a cutting width of 24 inches. The thing is a monster. Uh, so uh, that one stays downstairs for when I have big projects to do, and I'm still cranking along with my three just fine. So these pens are just these cute little stubby pens. People used to complain a lot about these pens. They have reworked them recently, uh, not even recently, probably maybe more than a year ago. But um, so they they they're much better. 
Um, they come in all sorts of crazy colors. You can get neon. This is a black shimmer, sort of metallic. Obviously, this is a silver. And there's just, you know, a, a range of colors that they come in. So, and there are some of these available to play around with at the Loot Mine Library. So, yeah. The one thing I like about the pens is, is that the pens themselves, you can, you can buy like just a, a set of a couple of black pens. They actually sell a set with, that has a white pen in it. And I keep missing it because they, they go like that. And so I, I haven't been able to buy one yet because I want to try it out on some black cardstock. But cardstock and these pens are pretty inexpensive so as opposed to you know, vinyl and things. So this is a great way to practice making a design, sketching it out, and, and really working with both the software and the machine. So the thing with using a sketch pen, with a Cameo 3, they can go in either tool holder, tool 1, tool 2, or both at the same time. I actually have done a couple of designs that have six or seven different colors. And so I can put two pens in at a time. And as you can see in this the picture on your handout, if you have more than two colors, there's a way to insert a pause Pop back to Silhouette Studio. I'm going to go to Send. Except for the fact there's nothing there, so it's not letting me do anything. Um, let's draw a line. Let's draw a square. Um, and I want to do these different colors. And as you can see, uh, again, on the handout, I did this sort of thing. Let's see, I'm going to draw another shape. So I want to make these three different colors. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go to my line color. And I'm going to make this one green. I'm going to make the square, uh, say, blue. I'm a pretty blue color. And then I'm going to leave the other line red. So when I go back into send, right now, because I'm on simple, it doesn't work. If I go to line, you see how these three different colors show up? And you can see the colors over here. So what I can do is, here's my add pause. I can move, I can add a pause. Actually, I want to click on this one because I want, I can put in the red pen. I can put in the blue pen, but I'm going to need it to stop in order to do the green one. So I'm going to tell it to add a pause and it will add it below the one that is highlighted. You can click on the color that will choose that one. You can always move these things around if you want, but that will add the pause. So it'll stop long enough for me to replace the color and then it'll draw the green circle. So. Here. Okay, so when you pick up a pen, just like any time when you're going to be writing or anything, best thing to do is scribble a little bit and make sure that the ink is flowing. Okay, then you leave the cap off. And unfortunately, I can't show this to you, but I'm going to show you the result. I don't want black. I'm going to go ahead and draw that little business that I had going on. I'm not sure what am I after? Green, blue, and red. Blue, red. Oops. So I'll draw it. Here's a fluorescent green one big time. Blue and red. I've got green. I've got red. And they're all working. They've been sitting on my shelf for years. So that's pretty good. Let's go back over to here. I'm going to go back to send. Actually, I'm going to go back to design. Move all this. I guess I'm going to use that piece of paper again. So, what I'm going to do, I'll show you a couple things here, but first thing I need to do is put the pens in. 
and okay, so red in tool holder number one, and you just press it down in there and lock it. Put your push the pen in. Make sure it's in there all right. Next one is blue. Oh, let's see what happens. I have an impression. I just need one more camera. That I have not had. Now, next thing I want to show you though is this is a new, brand new mat. And for those of you who have done anything with this before, you know this mat will be very, very so, what? You know it's sticky when the non adhesive poop is sticky. You call it sticky because I put my hand on it. Except for the fact that, there we go, and pick it up. If I try to put paper on that, it's very likely to be difficult to move. So, I have, I have repurposed my daughter's baby blanket. She's 20, so she's, she's okay with it. And I'm just going to press this on here. And it's clean. And it's well, mostly clean. Now I'm seeing I've got stuff on it it's sitting in my chair. I can't see it, so I'm not going to show it to you. But this will take some of the tack off. Um, a clean t shirt that's been washed a few times is a good idea. If you use something really too new that's got a lot of lint on it, it takes up too much of the stick. That's about as much as I want to do. Then I'm going to find my scraper thingy and take off some of the mess that I added because there, that blanket had been sitting next to my chair for too long. Now I'm going to get a piece of white paper, cardstock. This is actually cardstock. There is lots of different kinds of cardstock out there. It's pretty inexpensive. The one issue is, is if you get the super cheap stuff, it doesn't cut as well because it's very fibrous. This happens to be a brand I like a lot. It's called American Craft. I get it from the 12 by 12 cardstock shop, which I have linked to uh, in that document, the resource document. The other thing I like is um, a lot of people use recollections from Michaels. I, I've not had a problem with it. I don't use it a lot. Uh, but I also like is it Park Lane from Joann's. I find really nice i like to t i tend to work with what they call solid core cardstock what that means it's colored all the way through most cardstock if you look at the edge will actually be white it's two pieces cardstock is two pieces of paper laminated to each other and so the back of the paper is actually white and so when they stick it together it may be red on one side and red on the other but it's going to be white in the middle because of what i usually use paper for i prefer i prefer solid core but um, that's not necessary depending on what you're doing. Okay, so now I'm going to move a few things around the desktop so I can keep it for later. Can I tell you how much I don't like round things on a flat table? I spend more time pushing up under my desk. So. I really wish I could show you this working, but it won't take too long. So. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load it into the machine. Oh, I'm going to go back to Silhouette Studio, and I'm going to go ahead and let's make. Oh, yeah, I need to change that to sketch. Change that to sketch. That would not have been pretty. That would have been way too much force is what would have happened, is that pen would have been really pushing down. So and we're going to see what happens with these first two colors. Go ahead. Simon. But this is a great way to practice. I mean, literally just drawing shapes, filling shapes, making a design. Um, oh, and I'm going to, yeah, good. It messed up for me. So I'm very going to be very pleased to be able to show you that. Just further on in there, I talk about, um, nah, it's not complete. Oh, sometimes it does this. I don't know why. Okay. That's fascinating. 
Oh. oh, you know why? I made a mistake. I'm like, everything came out red. You want to know why? It's because you see this tool holder? I told it to draw with tool holder number one here and number one here. That was incorrect. I needed to tell it to draw from two because, and, and the same thing here. So I'm going to show you what I got. And you can see my mistake. As I said, this is the great part about they're not the thickest lines, but as you can see, they are all red. And I really do have a red and a blue pen in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to flip this around and I'll put it back in. And now that I told it to do the right way, go back to studio and okay so now we're going to try this again now it knows to use tool holder one which is the red pen then tool holder two which is the blue pen let me see if this works It's thinking. And now I have it paused. I need to remove the red pen. It was two holder one, right? And two holder one. And put in the green pen. Let me just scribble this a little bit. I'm going to pop in the green pen. Take a word for it. Take a word for the fact that all my pen lids are running, in the, running around the table. And then I'm going to come down here and resume. And it should draw my green circle. Or ellipse. Okay, I did it. Show that to you in a second. Now, okay, so can you guys see that well enough that it's green, red line, blue, rectangle, green ellipse. You'll notice that there's quite a skip in here. Before I put that pen in there, it was sitting there for a while. Um, I Probably what it should have taken it out and scribbled it and make sure the ink was flowing well enough. Um, but that will occasionally happen. It did draw it, but it's so fine you can barely see it. Again, this is the kind of thing where you go, okay. Um, and you can also find out when, when pens are getting older because they start to skip more often because they're a regular pen. But yeah, you know, all, all I'm out here is a piece of cardstock. I can, I can leave with that. Um, so. But that worked. So yay us. And that's you know the basis of doing any of those things with the sketch marks. If you don't have sketch pens, you might have lots of other pens, such as felt pens or uh, oh let me back up. I'm sorry before I get to this real quick. Sometimes you will find that the pen will drag on the paper where you don't want it. Let me see. I'm going to find out if you guys can see this. Thing. This is some card I made at we, um, this is uh, iris folding, but then I wrote on it with a sketch pen. I don't know if you can see it. Can you guys see at the top where this black ink is? Right along here. Some For some reason, there was some, this was a drag mark. And sometimes it happens and you can't re make it repeat. Sometimes you find out what's wrong. What was wrong here is that I had a nick in my mat 
actually had a pretty good slice in it. And so the either side of that really thin slice was raised up a little bit. Like, it, you know, you cut into plastic and the sides of it are a little more raised. Um, it caught the pen and that's what it, and it made the pen skip. And that's why that was there. So that's why I said, make sure your mat, it's good to use a, a newer mat that doesn't have a lot of marks cut into it. Uh, I routinely make mistakes. And so I wind up with, you know, it's cut a little too far through the paper or whatever I'm cutting and it will, will score the mat a little bit. Um, that's something that you want to avoid. You want to make sure that the paper, that it's clean and that the papers or the cardstock or whatever you're using is well adhered to your, um, your mat. So let's see. Um, and then sometimes I, I think that they have, guys that I don't think I have. There are on um, the silhouette. I'm going to move this camera and help. I'm, I apologize if you have done some of really nice looking ones here too. I got seasick from those. Um, I've got a lot of them. Look at this. Oh, that's my machine. These are spring holders, loaded holders. They slide on here. And what it's there to do is help hold the media down and hold the mat down. The issue is, is that some, this touches the paper and sometimes it can catch some of the still slightly damp ink and smear it. So when you load something in here, if you've got, if you're drawing or something, I suggest just moving them aside so that they're not going to be where you're drawing. And it, it's not going to harm anything, not going to cause any problems, probably. Let's see. This is a silhouette pen holder set. This can be used with, a lot of people like to use Sharpie markers. They use gel pens are a very popular thing. I have to tell you, I don't use this very often because I don't do a lot of drawing, or sketching. It, um, maybe if I do more, I'll, I'll try it out more often. But I did, I did work with this. And there is, the, let me put it this way. There will be a set of these at the library. They weren't sure if they had one checking and if they don't I have an extra and I'm gonna bring it over. Um I'm just gonna pop these things out of here. Show you real quick how this works. These are three different size collects collars. This has a tiny little cap on the end of it. And the way this works is that you find the collar that fits best on the pen that you have. I will grab this little um, fine point Sharpie marker. So I'm not sure which one's going to fit. This is the large one that clearly does not fit. It needs to hold it rather securely. This is the, um, let me try the small one. Now I can't, I can't fit that in there. Darn it. This, this one is too big. This one is too small. And this one is just right. Because it, it's a little hard to put on, but once I pop it through, it goes on. I'm then going to take this and I'm going to push it into that pen holder until I can't push it down anymore. And what that means is the tip is now at the end of this cap. I then take the collar and start tightening that in there until it's snug. It's not all the way. There's there's more threads here. I could. It, but that's what fits with this pen. So when I take the end of it off, you can hopefully see that the end of the pen is sticking out just a tiny little bit. And if I go to this paper, I can draw on it. And then from then on out, it works just like one of the sketch pens. You pop it in the pen holder and no problem. Well, hopefully. <laughs> um, the, like, the one thing that with felt pens is they tend to get kind of blobby sometimes because the machine, you ever, you know, when you're just drawing with a felt pen, you stop and it, and it sits there for half a second and the paper soaks up some of the ink that you didn't want it to. So that can be an issue, but it's just a matter of working with it and playing around with it. And let me just 
put all this back away. Okay, so there's sort of the pens, and you can do, you can draw designs, you can draw. Um, let's do one other thing. Use this piece of paper now. Let's go back and remember if you saw the last class or you, when you see the next last class, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to use the file up in the middle to make it much smaller. And I'm going to call it in the middle. Okay, so I want to have this box, for some reason I want it filled with a design, or filled with color. So I'm going to go over here to my line effects panel and I'm going to say I want lines like that. Well, those are very far apart. So let's, let's I want them in the angle. I don't know. Now, again, if you remember from the last class, I don't have an outline around them. Maybe that's how I want it, but if I don't, it's easy enough. I can select the object. I can duplicate it, in which case I just did Control V. And then I can take out the effects. And you notice that the outline is back. I then take both, I select both of those items, come up to center. There it is, come up to center, click on that. And now they're centered to each other. They're still both selected. So I'm going to say group. And now it's just one thing. I'm going to make sure this is mostly in the middle. It is. And it's tiny. Um, I'm going to go to send. Put that blue pen back in there. The whole, whole one. Doesn't really matter now. Um, now it does say cut, so I have to fix it. I need to sketch, please. Thank you very much. In tool holder one, I can go back to simple if I wanted. I don't need to cut by line anymore because, or cut by color. Uh, well, it says line, not cut, excuse me, sketch by line. Because you can also do that, use the line thing to sketch, it's a cut thing in a particular order. But that's the easy part. You see that I told it to sketch, it's automatically put it to pen, and it set it to the default setting. I'm going to load this piece of scribbled on. Paper back into the machine. I'm going to send it. Let's see what we get. And there it is in the middle of my page. I don't know. Can you guys see the lines in there? Or does it look like a solid color? It looks kind of solid to me. Yeah. Yeah, it it looks kind of, yeah I can't see the lines either. It does. It, it's just that with the camera. Yeah. Sometimes less light helps. But it's just that they're so close together. They're actually running diagonally here. Um, and I can see them. But, but you know, there's a, there's a whole different thing when you can do a really neat design and sketch it with a pen. I'm not a, I, I don't draw. I am an artist, but drawing is not my thing. I've taken classes. I'm better at it than I used to be, but there are things that I could do with a silhouette and a sketch pen that I would never be able to do myself. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> There's something for everybody out there. Um, the woman who taught my um, drawing class, Ms. Karen, she is a spectacular watercolor artist, unbelievable. And she and I had a conversation once about how she can't do 3D things, which is what I do when I make my artwork. I do um, paper plants and flowers. And she said, it just doesn't work with my brain. And I always just thought, found it interesting. Here's this woman who makes these incredible watercolors. Is very can draw very well and all these things. But that's just not her thing. So we've all got something. Creative mind. So have, has, has anybody ever used or seen the foil quill before? Nope. No. Okay. okay. Well, we're going to do the, sort of a little unboxing here. I have used this before. I haven't used this one before. There's now a complete, this box is, it has a little friend um, down at the library if you want to 
go in there and try it out. Um, it, it's really a fun, cool thing. I'm going to really quickly show you guys a video of that the company that makes this VR moment has put out. Play that. I'll spare you the music. That's a very intricate design. Don't start there. <laughs> uh, but it's it's something that you can do. There's three different um, thicknesses of pen. Don't plug it into that. This is a Cricut machine. I thought I got the silhouette example, but I got the Cricut one. Um, we'll go through all of this. But it's essentially the same. You pop the pen in there. It's, it's pretty spectacular. It's a lot of fun. It's nice too, and you can do leather, you can do leatherette, you can do some vinyls. You have to try it out. Um, so, oh, there it is. There's the cameo one. Yeah, I should have fast forwarded it. Um, the, and these are all just sort of different cutting machines. Things. All right, I think we got that. Oops. So here we are here. All right, what comes in this fun box? Do these things. I, I learned stuff from my daughter. You know, they do these games and different stuff. Unboxing video. Woo! Okay. But it does help you to see sort of how things arrive when you buy stuff. So, what is in here? There are three thicknesses of quill pen here. See, they all have a USB plug on the end. Um, I can look at this and tell you that the pink one is the fine. The aqua one is the standard, and then the blue one is thick. And that is, you, you're going to be able to play around with those and just find what you like best. If you're going to do you know, something that's pretty sketch intense, fine or Standard would be best if you're going to do things that you want to fill something because you can set it to fill. Um, you can, you might want to use the thicker one. So we're going to use the standard one. Right? The other things that come in this box are an assortment of adapters for different um, machines, as you saw in that video. You want to use adapter A for the silhouette cameo. Let's see. There are some samples of foil. It's a gold, silver, and copper in there. This comes in all kinds of colors. Uh, and I mean, fuchsia, rose gold, which is a, the hot thing now. Cool because I like it. But um, this will. So at the library, if you're able to get in there, um, there are there's this foil, and then there's also several boxes, larger boxes with bigger rolls in them, um, for you to use to to try things out. If you want to make a project, you'll need to bring your own foil. That's the only thing with that is is the library only has that other foil there for people to practice with and learn with. Um, this is just washi tape because you need to have a light tack tape to hold the foil down onto your media. The other thing you can use, I like this a lot. This is a um, Scotch brand. It is called Delicate Surface Tape. It's a painter's tape, but it's made for delicate surfaces, obviously. Um, and it's way less expensive than washi tape. It's not as fancy, but it is a cute purple color. Uh, but it, it works really well. It, it holds things down well enough, but it comes up quite easily, won't damage your paper or anything else. So. Probably use that tonight. And then this little guy is a little metal tab that if you want to heat up your quill pen while it's installed in the cameo, you'll have it installed in the, have it installed in the cameo and you'll slide this underneath it because it does get hot and that protects the surface of the machine from the heat. And then when you're ready to use it, you remove it. What I usually do is this thing just gets in my way and I find it annoying is lay the pen to heat up on a heat proof surface. I have 
uh, piece of, um, what do you call that, silicone that I use um, to do that with. So, I'm going, okay. Now, how do you, where do you plug this in? Because you'll see on here, big letters, do not plug the quill pen into the USB port of the Silhouette Cameo. Apparently on other machines you can do that, but with the Cameo, um, it may damage the machine. So we don't want to do that. Um, what I have, you can plug it into an outlet, you know, a, an adapter. You can plug it into your computer. Uh, this is my big, pumpkin, it's not even that big, really, um, phone charger that I take with me when I do events and things. And so you can plug it into that. And what's nice about this is, is on the machine, it can just sit up in that little tray that's above the cutting area. And it will make sure that the cord doesn't go too far. Because that's the only thing, if you're going to, um, you, if you're going to plug it into, it's not the longest cord. It's not short, but I don't know, like two feet maybe at the most. Um, you're going to have to have the outlet pretty close, whatever you can plug into your computer, whatever. And, and rather than like, I, this is a wireless machine. So sometimes it's sitting across the room for me and I don't, I'm not near enough to plug this into my laptop, but because I have this, I don't have to worry about it. So you can see that, I believe you can see, see that that is lit up. Oh my God. There we go. Ooh, glow in the dark. That lets you know it's heating up. This thing gets warm. I've not found it gets like outrageously hot. Like you can't touch it, but obviously it does extend the little metal part does extend a bit in the end. Don't touch that when it's hot. Because you will burn your finger. And that would not be fun. I'm gonna take my pen out. And I'm gonna this takes about five minutes to heat up. So I'm gonna set this over here where not hurt anybody and we're going to go into silhouette studio again and we're going to come up with something to use that let's do here back to design new let me think open uh you can buy all sorts of things for this um, on your resource sheet. Uh, if you haven't been to, there's uh, design bundles, font bundles, obviously have fonts. Design bundles has fonts and designs. Um, Creative Fabrica, single line fonts. You know, if you type in single line sketch drawings or something into Google, you'll find all sorts of things. Uh, it, but the idea is that Rather, rather than um, being an outline of something, like in text in particular, it has a single line, or being a, a picture, like, well, let's let's open something up here. I'm going to go to, and from my last class, I'm going to bring in, not going to bring in that really cool mandala, but I am going to bring in, it's, it's big, let's make it real. <laughs> block the aspect ratio. I can actually just now this is a uh, file I downloaded from Pixabay. That's another resource that's on the document. It's solid fill here, but in truth, it's simply traced because it was a transparent background PNG, it automatically traced and it'll just draw around this, which is fine. That's a pretty cool design that would look really neat on a card or something. Um, you can fill it if you want to, but you will have to fill each of these pieces in order for that to be filled. Be sketched, you know, with a with whether it's a pen or the foil quill pen. For tonight, we're just going to sketch the outline. So I'm going to set this here. And I'm going to use black. 
and I'm going to use how about some of this gold foil? Okay, I'm gonna set that there. So I want to show you how I'm gonna set this up to use it on my machine. The so first thing I'm gonna do is actually trying to think my way through this people. I don't like to put whole pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock on my mat if I'm not going to use the whole piece. Frequently I am. I cut out lots of things out of the same piece at the same time. So what I'm going to do, this is where I need to know where on this mat to put my paper. So if I want it here and I want to, I, one thing when you're using that foil, if by any chance you stick the foil, if it touches the mat it, on the, the back of the, foil, uh, the piece of foil, you'll see this more when I open it up and I'll show it to you. Um, it's going to pull that metallic stuff off and onto the mat. It's really hard to get off. It really messes up your mat. So you want to make sure there's enough of a margin of your whatever media you're using to be able to take down the foil, completely cover where your design is, but still not get it on your mat. So I'm going to say that I'm going to put this here. I'm going to have an inch down and about an inch below. So that tells me that I need to have a piece of cardstock that is one, two, three, four, five inches. And I'm just going to leave it 12 inches just because I'm getting kind of lazy. So what are we going to do? We're going to stop this share and we're going to come back here. And I have, you can simply cut it with a piece of paper. I have to have my handy dandy this goes the body here. Oh, here's my cardstock. This cardstock has a texture on one side. You can't see it, but trust me on it. It's it's got sort of an almost linen type of texture and it's smooth on the other. It's gonna give you two different, slightly different results when you foil quill it. Um I'm gonna use the, the smooth side. So what I need here is a piece of cardstock to match up size I said, which of course I'm going to instant, instantly for that. I'm going to say five, yep. And go back to where I want to be. So I know I need to get five inches there. And zip. I'm going to set the slide, save it later. Like I said, I'm going to just cut it with a pair of scissors because this is really handy. I do a lot of paper crafting. I don't do scrapbooking, interestingly enough. I have a lot of friends who scrapbook. I hang out with them. And I make my stuff paper things and they do their paper things and we all just know it. Okay. Now you can tell how unsticky that mat became because that uh, normally it would be a little stickier than that when I pulled this off. I made the mistake. You can see little flecks on there. I forgot that that towel that blanket had been sitting sort of in the crook of the arm of my chair for quite a while and had collected a good bit of business. So I'm not going to clean this mat off. The way I like to clean the mat off like that. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. Looks pretty well. So I'm going to put this piece on here. Okay. Press it down and make sure it's there. Okay. Now I know that my design is in the middle of this mat and that, or in the middle of this piece of cardstock and that I have about an inch on either side. So I'm going to take my question. I have to look back. Let's go look back on this. See how wide it is. Gosh, it's so, so I've got this here. I've, it is. Six, almost seven inches wide. And this stuff is even this little tiny roll. It's six inches wide. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make this six inches. Actually, I'm gonna make it five inches. Five. Tab. And there we go. So now I can just use the width of this and find out I don't need that. Middle. Let me see. Make sure I'm doing this right. Okay. 
Oh, I can, to center this onto this mat, I select the item and I go up to my little tools here. I can click, you see how the line's running through it? It's this way, it's telling it, put it in the middle. You can align things to the mat that way, or you can al align I, uh, objects to different objects that way too. If I select five, if I did five of these and they were all over the place, and I selected them all and I clicked on that center, it would put them all down the center um, to each other. So that tells me that I'm now going to go back to my map and my uh, silver. Okay, this paper. Now, the thing that, this is very thin. It's super thin. If I were to put this on the sticky part of the mat, it would be silver on that mat. So I try to avoid that. The thing that seems almost a little counterintuitive is you kind of get used to putting things with the side down that you want on the mat. That is not how this works. This actually, let me go ahead and put this in. So I don't want it to be any bigger than that. So I'm going to cut this about four and a half inches. Matter of the way before I stick something to it. No, it's wide enough. And it likes to curl up. I and you that's one thing you can actually buy those foil in sheets. And the one nice thing about it is it doesn't curl up like this. I'm going to say about four and a half. Okay. And so that's how I know where to cut it. I love arguing with me. Craft supplies. Five that. And then keep this down. I'm going to use my. my sort of pocket surface. Delicate is not a word that is typically, I typically associate with. Um, the thing with the. Oh, I did. Way too long. Well, that. Apparently, I'm having measuring issues. Let's try a bigger pair of scissors. I need a margin around it. That's what I'm going to try to say is that I do need a margin around it so I don't have to worry about getting it exactly where it needs to be. You know, super, super precise. Um, but I need to not have it bigger in most scissors. You can save those little pieces of foil because they may come in handy for something smaller. Okay. This stuff, when you apply it, goes shiny side up. Now, the other side is a little bit shiny, but it's duller. It's kind of like aluminum foil. You, you know how one side is dull and the other? It's the shiny side up. Because how this works is when that gets the heated pen goes onto it, 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 it takes the media off the back of this the little carrier sheet, which you'll see. Um, how it, you know, it'll be transparent where the design was taken off. 
so that's the but that's the the trickiest part about this is remembering which sun end goes up. I'm going to tape it down here. Get a little prayer that I got in the right spot. I want to have it as smooth and as taut as I can get it. Don't obsess over it, but just know that you don't want it loose on there. You don't want it wrinkling up. With the things that don't curl up this much, I wouldn't be as too wor as worried about putting this much tape on it. But what I don't want to have happen is have the have it got get caught because it's rolled up a little bit and so therefore raised up a little bit. I want to make sure that's perfectly flat. That's why I'm putting that long of a piece of tape on it. If it was flatter foil, I would not worry about it as much. I'll tell you, I can plow through some tape and I'm having a good time. But I can't apply it straight. No, I can take that back off. That's why it's for delicate surfaces. Spread it back down. Oh, they did it again. Oh, and by the way, tape really likes to stick to this, but that's also another good way to clean off the mat. Just take a little bit of that tape and just use the back of it. That should work. I hope. We'll find out. We'll see what happens. So, my foil full premise heated up. Oops, I'm not. Let me come back here for a minute. I forgot my adapter. So, this actually, there's um, threads here and inside so that. in there just nice and snug. Pop it into the tool holder. Set my battery pack up on the ledge there. And load my media. And now I'm going to go back to Silhouette Studio and um say a little prayer uh, obviously i need to change this I need to sketch now with the foil um sometimes five is pretty fast for that i'm actually gonna turn that down to four and um three or four is is better for the foil quill pen because it uh, it just you know allows the the hot pen part to go into the foil long enough to adhere it to the to the paper. So let's I'm gonna go ahead and send that. And you can hear it working away doing the outline of the design. Now, if you come down here, it I, can you guys see this number over here? Yes. Okay. That is not necessarily the most accurate thing on the planet. Sometimes it'll say things like two and a half hours. Um, it, there are some things that could take that long. If you had a intricate design that you were filling a lot of it could take a half an hour an hour etc to do this is going pretty quickly so far so good looks okay to me we'll find out it's like the secret reveal it's very exciting um let me go through here oh you can use the foil on lots of different things as with anything else with the silhouette you have to test things out with leatherette or leather uh, you typically need more force because you know when it's pressing onto the onto cardstock it's hitting a pretty hard surface but when you're talking about leather or leatherette it's got some give to it, a little spring to it so just keep that in mind if you want to do something like that Just had a moment. Oh, 
All right, so the first thing I need to do is I'm going to take this pen out of this holder and I'm actually going to unplug it. I don't need it anymore and I don't want to stain it. Okay. Unload this and put it back over here. And here we have a very exciting reveal. Is it better with that light on or off? I think That's on. A, on? Because I know that what I'm seeing on the screen is not exactly what you guys are seeing. I have learned about it. So I'm going to take this tape up. I'm a really, I'm not super frugal, but I use a lot of tape. This is perfectly good tape and could be reused. I typically would just take it and, and I have a lamp on my a lamp post over here and, and stick that to it, especially if I was gonna, doing a bunch of the same thing so I can reuse it until it's just not sticking anymore. Or in my case, I may take it from off on that. Oh, maybe even like that. All right. So, oh, this is so exciting. I can't see it. Oh, and it comes right up. Oh, wow. Is that? Oh, <laughs> there we go. Thank you. And did you, isn't it cool? Did you notice that I just dropped this? <laughs> if you didn't, I did. The good news is I dropped it shiny side down. This is the carrier sheet on this one. Let me see if I can. Yeah, there it is. Seeing see oh, cool. through that, it is it has taken the gold uh, or the silver, I guess that is, off the back of this and adhered it onto the cardstock. Now tell me that is not just super, super special. And that's, that's just, really cool. And that that's just a design uh, 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 um, vector file I pulled off of PN of uh, Pixabay. Which is free. Um, if I were, I mean, I, there are typically ways you can pay the designer. Um, so if I was going to use this and something was going to sell, I would definitely go back and pay them. Um, when I use it once, or you know, if I was going to bring it to a class. Oh, and that's. Did you see what I just did? I pulled that paper right off there. You see how that curve? You can avoid that. Flipping this over and taking. Yeah, I I mean that's amazing. I just and, and I'll tell you it's even better in person. I don't think it really the camera can quite do it justice. But that is you know, you, super cool. You could customize cards, you could you know do all sorts of different things you can do. But and that's the medium, the sort of the standard and thickness. You can have a much finer one if you want. Or as I said, if, if for some reason, maybe you wanted to, in this case, maybe these little bits that are around the edges, that would be kind of neat to fill those. They're small enough where it's not going to take a lot of time, maybe fill the center and then just leave the other open. So the other thing is um, you can say, I wanted to cut this out like around the go back into how much time have we got oh we're good we're till seven right yes okay so let's go back into design and say i want to um cut out cut this out because i wanted to hear it this time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's been a while since i've done this so we're going to see what happens we're going to go to the offset panel, which is that little star. I have this selected. I'm going to tell it to offset. That's pretty good. There's one small thing in there I don't like, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the original design off that offset. I don't really want it to cut that out. I don't need it. So what I need to do here, because this is all one, one object right now. So if I right click on that, and I release the compound path, all the pieces will be separate. There's only two. I click on that one and I get rid of it. We have time, I could do this probably. Um, so now what I want to, remember we were talking about this, the center business. I'm gonna select both those items. 
and center it. I'm going to group it. I'm going to move this back to where it was. But the thing I need to do before I need to ungroup it, because what I need to do is to change that red line, the, the offset line, to a different color. I'm going to say, it doesn't really matter. Really. Okay, now I'm going to group these things back together again. I know I'm going fast, but if you watch the video, you know that. The great thing about videos, I've, I've done online classes a lot, taking them to learn things, is that you can watch the video, pause it, go do your thing, come back to the video, and then just go back and forth. Okay, so now what I can do is I can go to send. I can go to line. I'm going to say that in the second tool holder, this I'm going to sketch. Just oh, so I got it backwards. I want to sketch first, cut second, always, 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 always sketch first, cut second. I'm going to switch those around. Switch this around just to get my brain working properly. So the first thing I want to do is sketch. Do we get no? That's right. The red is sketch. Uh, sketch. So we're going to do the outline of this design again. The second part is cut. I'm going to. This is. Um, this cuts really well. The cards. This these settings. Except I need to tell it to. And I'm going to use. I cannot use an auto blade in the second. Um, tool holder. As you notice, it won't let me pick an auto blade because it doesn't fit in there. The way the auto blade works and, and sets itself to the right depth, it doesn't work if it's in the second tool holder. Fine with me because I have a, a ratchet blade. I actually have a premium blade that I love a lot, which is the same as a ratchet blade. But what that means is that I need to make sure I have this set on the core. Yep, cards are heavy, so I need to make my blade depth this Set that. This is the blade I'm going to use. You know, it's a premium blade. If it's got a blue cap, I'll tell you. I used to buy these all the time because they were made from a harder. The blade was made from a harder material than any of the standard blades. They have since changed that, and all the blades are made with this now um, because it just when cutting paper, paper dulls things pretty quickly. You know how the scissors story goes so um but in order to set it i need to put it on i need to set the depth myself which is three i'm going to pop that oh i better plug back in my, my bb i said i wasn't going to do anything oh, no. while i set up my new now the thing is is this as lovely as it is, um, I can't I can't use it again. Um, I mean, if I wanted to be real skimpy, I could maybe cut off the parts. But this this no longer has any foil where the lines were drawn, so it it wouldn't it wouldn't work. Um, that's one reason too. You want to keep the foil as small as you can, that it's easier to work with. If I did this, if I had to do this over again, I wouldn't have cut it so long. I actually made that mistake. So I'm going to put this on. That's for friends and giggles just because it'll be fun. I'm going to put this with the what do you call that? textured side up. This is what my desk becomes, the repository of all things. Put this pen back, pen back in here, this little pen. Yeah. Oops, that's my pen. All that and stuff. Put in my, load my mat. We're gonna go back to studio. Um, what I need to do is add a pause after I foil, because I need to remove that foil before it cuts it out. Whether you're sketching or foil quilling or anything, um, you always want to cut second. You want to sketch first and cut second. Obviously, when you're sketching with a pen, you don't need to pause because 
there's, there's nothing you need to remove. Um, but we're going to go ahead and send this. It's like an adventure. Find out if I got that pen heated up enough. Let's see. Cord keeps dropping down. Move, move something. There we go. It's a long cord, which is nice because it, it can cover the whole distance of the machine, but it tends to flop down. Keep an eye on that. Now we're ticking away with time, so we have about a minute. Okay, it has paused. I'm going to take that pen out, keep it out of my way. And now I'm going to peel back. It's a little tricky because this is up underneath the still. I probably shouldn't have used as much tape on it as I did. But there's a well, there's a way. I would probably, if I was doing this, oh. Um, does it work? I don't know. Maybe. Now I can resume. So you have um, to leave it loaded while you remove the foil? You know, you know what happened is it didn't, no, it, it this is something, you know, here's a mistake, or not a mistake, but here's something that happens on occasion. It is still trying to draw it. You're going to see that it's incomplete. It'll sometimes pause before you actually want it to pause. Yeah, it's best if you leave it loaded because it... Um, to keep it in the same it, place, right? Exactly. I mean, because you can reload it, but it's, it's kind of iffy if it's going to be in the same spot. The other thing to do is not to put the pause in there and to keep an eye on it, you know, and once you, you're sure that it's all, oh boy, that's pretty loud. Once you're sure that it's, the design is finished, then you, you oh, then you pause it and, and yeah. then, you know, go from there and say, yes, but, so I'll show you. So we are, you can see the whole thing didn't finish, but. It did. Something wasn't right. It's cut, but it's not cut all the way through. So these are the things that happen sometimes. And you just yes, it does. It. <laughs> yeah, and it happens. Trust me, it happens to me. Honestly, now I've cut this cardstock a lot, and I've not had a problem with it. Um, a lot of times when I'm cutting cardstock, I actually have it cut twice because this is the kind of thing that happened. It cut through the first layer, but it didn't come all the way through the back. You can even see in the back where it's scored it, but it hasn't cut quite through. So, and that's what happens when you work <laughs> with materials, but uh, you get the idea of what you can do with it. And it's just a matter of, of working through it. I didn't test cut anything. I didn't do things I would normally do. Um, so Linda, with that, would you increase the depth of the blade or would you increase the force? I would probably, if this, I would, I would run a test cut on this thing. And what I would probably do is have it cut, cut twice. When I go here, I'll go back. Okay. In the send panel for the, um, Move that pause. I don't like that pause. No, I didn't. I click on this. Um, it passes. I'm right. gonna. I'm gonna increase that too. Um, I'm trying to remember. I also have a specialized. I made my own these. Well, that's interesting. Now, see, that was too much. Um, the force might also help. 
increasing the force a little bit might also yeah. help um because yeah it's going to press it, but it, if you look at the it's, oops. Yeah, it's, like heavy. it's already pretty high force right at 30 it's only up to 33 so i'd be inclined I'd be inclined to have it do two passes because it came darn close to cutting through. And I hate to increase the blade depth because then I start scoring oh, the Right, mat. you then want to start cutting your mat. Yeah, yeah. And I have I have sliced through these silhouette mats. I actually typically use, because this machine is well out of warranty, I typically use, um, uh, I think it's Nikapa. Um, I get them from Amazon. Um, I oh, find okay. Yeah, I like them better, but I'm always caution caution people to be careful. If you have a new machine, don't use off brand mats. Not that silhouette's going to grill you, you know, over the you know, rake you over the coals and and you know, about if you are having an issue with their machines, but it does technically void the warranty. Oh, okay. So. All right. Well, I think that's about it. So yeah, you got to see a great mistake. Oh well, I don't like the mistake. It just it's not my fault, you know. And it happens all the time, right? <laughs>